there's a lot to get to okay there's a lot to get to um so obviously we'll talk about every player um individually briefly okay i'm gonna separate these segments and i'll tell you my overall thoughts um but we're gonna talk about the chris paul press conference in a separate segment you know wimby's press conference castle's press conference and then also i want to talk about uh malachi okay but i'll just give you a brief synopsis of just how i've like viewed this game a brief summary okay so the san antonio spurs in my opinion even with the addition of wimby and uh chris paul i feel like this game was tougher than the last because orlando really they were some tryhards okay they they did not give us an inch like they they played really tough and honestly these types of teams that really love to play defense um and kind of low to the ground you know broody type guys that you have lurking around is usually what makes victor Wimbanyama struggle and he did struggle right so like i i think that i think that this was a huge a huge win i know it's just preseason right like in the long scheme of things it doesn't help our record or anything but i do think that this was it, it was a lot we can take from this game okay some good some bad but a lot that we can take from this game and i think that um it really showed uh the tenacity of of this team because they they were going at it uh this this was this didn't feel like a preseason game it, it felt maybe when we got to the fourth quarter like the last three-ish minutes four minutes it kind of felt like a preseason game but up to that point I thought it was a pretty hard uh, uh, win, right? I thought it was pretty tough. It's a, it's a tough win. All right, so with that being said, let's just dive straight into it. So I'll go through every single player briefly, and then I'll just tell you how I felt overall about the, the, the game, right? So starting off with Jeremy Sohan, as we can see, he was great. I, I don't really know what else to say about Sohan, right? Like he's one of those players that it, it's going to be a litmus test as far as if you actually watch the game that that's how it's going to that, that's all i can say about him because every single game and people come out and they're like oh you know he's trash or oh he's not that good they literally go to the box score and then they watch some highlights and sohan isn't going to show up in the highlights right he's he's just not he's not that type of player he does a lot of uh, uh you know his game has a lot of nuance to it he, he's not just in your face and it's not a pretty game but he gets the job done right so five for six a lot of it was putbacks at least from my recollection um and then also he did uh he, he made some really great cuts as well so high basketball iq played great defensively he was a tyrant um and then offensively you know he did his thing only shot one three so we can't really gauge how much better he is at three but we do know that over the years he has gotten much better his free throws look better as well right so he's no longer just shooting it with the one hand they finally told him hey go ahead and add in your your left and he looks good he looks good so sohan was great all fast to the game no complaints there he's 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 solid okay he is solid will he be a superstar i don't know i've never said that never made that claim um, but he is one of my favorites for a reason is because it's high basketball IQ and pretty much consistency, maybe not shooting wise consistency, but all other facets of the game. He is consistent, <laughs> very consistent. Um, but yeah, so, and he added 10 pounds. I've said this before. He added 10 pounds, but you really can't tell, right? I mean, he's quick as ever. So, uh, you know, if anything, it just added on to his strength, but he was great. He was, he was phenomenal. Um, Harrison Barnes. I'm not even going to harp on Harrison Barnes. I mean, we know we're going to get out of him. And I think every single game, I'm not going to have to sit back and, and say anything. Um, but verbally, he was great. He was a great leader for us. Did a good job. Um, Shooting-wise, obviously, not the best. 33%, but he only put up three shots. It's whatever. Uh, Vic. Now, Victor Wimbanyama, very, very rusty. Okay, very, very rusty. Um, now, at the end of the day, you know, NBA Central and these NBA accounts, they're going to be playing over and over and over verbatim. 
the Victor Wimbanyama and Chris Paul connection, that alley-oop that everybody was waiting for that finally happened. Um, but at the end of the day, Vic didn't have that great of a game. Nothing caused for, for concern. I'm not worried or anything like that. I think it's totally cool. No big deal whatsoever. But he did he did struggle, right? I think we can all agree on that, that he struggled. Wimby just needs to dust the rust off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but some positivity, um, some positives. He had four assists, and he made some dimes. I mean, it was some really good passes. That one uh, pass to uh, Julian Champigny in the corner after Chris Paul gave that off-ball screen, Victor saw it immediately. He saw it immediately, and that was a beautiful pass. Um, so he's still Vic. Nothing to really worry about. Um, I, I Well, I will say this, okay? I can't just say, hey, just not pay attention at all. The three-point shooting, I'm hoping that this is not the case this year because there were many a there are many occasions where I was like, good guy, Vic. Good guy, Vic. Last season, I mean, I was like, ugh, dude, you got to knock down these threes. But moving on, Julian Champagny. So I probably do need to harp on this because we won't be talking about him in a different segment. Um, I'm convinced. I saw someone in the chat earlier say that they want Castle to start. I do too. I do as well. But on paper and from what we've seen thus far, Julian Champigny is the best option for replacing uh, Devin Fassell until Devin comes back. It just is what it is, right? Uh, I mean, he, he stretched out the floor, plays decent defense. I, it just is what it is, right? Um, our starting lineup, the, this is the fortunate part. Julian Champigny's role is 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 going to be different it would be significantly different where last season he was taking up the small forward spot this season it will be the shooting guard spot with allowing harrison barnes possibly harrison barnes that's another thing that's something we probably need to think about too i'm not 100 percent convinced that harrison barnes starts i don't know i don't know but uh i definitely see julian champagne not playing the same role he did last season he did a phenomenal job in this game though um you know, four for 10, three for six from uh, three, as we can see there. Um, and all around, just an all around good game. He, he is, he is by definition a three and D and he has high IQ as well. I, it was a few shots that I thought that he forced it, but um, you know, I think he tried to dunk on like two people. That was kind of weird. Um, but yeah, not going to drink the Champagne Kool-Aid yet. He was the same last offseason, but then disappeared during the regular season. I actually disagree, Mando. I, th I thought that while offensively he wasn't as effective, you know, at times during last season, I do think that he had a pretty good connection. And you saw it in this game, too. He had a pretty good connection with Sohan. And then defensively, we could we didn't have that many people to rely on, but we could rely on him fairly well de defensively the only thing i'm worried about is the fact that he'll be starting but i i do think that he might be our best shot right now right chris paul is a huge upgrade from trey jones um harrison barnes being in that small forward spot is a big upgrade and maybe julian champagne can come into just a catching spot up shooting role and be totally fine right and lord knows he's going to be getting a lot of easier looks than he was last season not to say not not to say that Devin Fassell and Vic didn't do a good job of giving him the ball but Chris Paul's on a whole nother level right so um but yeah Chris Paul he was great won't harp on it too much um but I do think that he did he did Chris Paul isms right he he was not only because a lot of people were expecting, oh, it'll just be the Chris Paul Victor, you know, connection all game. And that was not the case. Um, he did a great job of getting everyone involved. His first pass of the game was to Jeremy Sohan for an easy corner shot. Unfortunately, he missed it. Um, but he was trying to find everyone um, other than Vic because guys were so worried about Victor with Maniama in the pick and roll. So, uh, yeah, so he, he did a great job and he's he's having Chris Paul is something that we didn't have last season where someone's going to see that second and third read, not just the first read, right? It's not just easy dump offs that we're accustomed to. Come on, Brandon may not be consistent, but he can score on all levels on his, on his day. Okay. 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 Malachi Branham. Mm. Okay. 
Okay. All right. All right. All right. Like I said, going to be a separate segment, but right off the bat, he worries me so much. And it's not a matter of because someone asked me if I thought that he's going to be Lonnie Walker, right? Like, is this the Lonnie Walker situation where he has so much potential, but he'll never see that potential or something like, I do not see it that way with Malachi at all. I don't see it that way. I think he does still have the potential. I think he will see that potential, but it's just the role that he plays with the Spurs is not, is, is not what he's even best at, right? What, what Malachi Branham was great at in college was the pick and roll mid range player. He was three level, but for the most part, he was a pick and roll, you know, maestro at times. And he did a really good job in that role. But now when we have the addition of Chris Paul and even Blake Wesley being a, a better passer this year, um, uh, Stefan Castle, I just don't see a role. Trey Jones, I just don't see a role for Malachi. Like the only role that the Spurs have for him is being a spot up shooter. And at this point, there's a lot of ill-advised shots that he's attempting as well. So I just don't know because defensively it's not there and it's not much else you can lean on. So this isn't me saying Malachi doesn't have a future with the NBA. I'm just not, I'm just not sure if he has a future with the Spurs for what we're using him for. Um, yeah, I, I just don't see it, but we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit, I guess. Uh, Blake Wesley was awesome as always. Uh, he's another one of those guys similar to Sohan where you're not going to be able to see his impact through his stats alone like you see this and you're like okay he went two for five 40 percent field goal percentage not that great but man oh man he did a he does a great or he's been doing a great job of taking care of the ball um it seems like his mind is far, finally meeting his athleticism and he's doing a good job has very high iq too and there's a quite a few flashes where he makes a pass and you're like whoa i did not see that coming uh very impressive so Blake Wesley, no issues there. Not worried about him whatsoever. Um, Mamu convinced he's back up power forward. I don't think, I don't think anyone should think otherwise, right? He's really fast too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. His athleticism has met his mind. His mind has met his athleticism. Uh, you can definitely see his three steals and a bulk uh, on the stat sheet. Oh well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. He did get the three steals and a block. He's a pest. Defensively, he's an absolute pest. One, one, one thing I was not expecting was him playing so well next to Castle. Defensively, those guys are really tough to deal with when they're out there alone. Um, yeah, we don't really have that many liabilities this year. Last year it was a, it was, it was tough, but we don't have any this year. Thanks, Mister Page. I feel like City gonna get cut. No, I disagree. All right, so uh, Mamu, he's going to be a backup power forward. City, City has always been a working um, project. Uh, so you just got to give him a little bit of time. But this game, he didn't play bad. He didn't play bad either of his games, honestly. I thought he was fine. Uh, it's just his role, you know. He, he's, I guess, I guess it, I know that I'm like on repeat. All right, broken record. But like Blake Wesley and Black, like Jeremy Sohan, it's not going to show up in the stat sheet with him. He's just not, not that type. Um, but that three he hit, I was like, okay, that made me feel a little bit better, right? He didn't hesitate on that. Because I was worried last game when he had a wide open three and he just immediately said, no, I'm going to drive. But I definitely can see him having a spot on this team. Now this season, I don't think he gets a lot of minutes. If, if all, if, if any minutes, Brandon could be cut. Yeah, I think so too, but we'll get there. Um, like, like I said, another segment, uh, castle was great. A lot of people were like, oh, he's, oh God, he's about to get the primo treatment. He is going to get the primo treatment because castle is, is actually really good. He's, he's really good. Um, doesn't feel like a rookie at all. Uh, utilizes his strength very well already basketball ready uh learned from his mistakes last game you know as you can see only one turnover that's what i was trying to bring up hold on let me bring up this this tweet it did it did some numbers this tweet did some numbers but i tweeted out 
that six turnovers don't mean anything. And maybe I need to elaborate on that because uh, quite a few people were like, no, dude, it does mean something. I'm like, no, it doesn't mean anything. Um, so I posted this and I said, and as you can see, it's just highlights, you know, of last game and putting in that work. And, you know, one thing I said was, yeah, it doesn't mean anything. That was his first NBA game. He was still poised, controlled, and comfortable. That's the most important thing. I don't know why we're worried and concerned about turnovers when Victor Wimbanyama, as we know, as great as he is, he got a lot of turnovers last season. So I I'm just not concerned with Castle getting some turnovers right now. And none of the turnovers from even the first game came across to me as, oh my God, it's a rookie making mistakes. It came across as he's a little rusty. Like that that's all I got from it. Um, a lot of it were charges that they got on him um, where he was just getting maybe a little extra physical, you know, trying to utilize his strength. I, I just wasn't worried about it at all. It, it didn't come across like he was trying to prove something or he played at his pace, it, which was a good pace. He was patient, made the right reads. So I was just never worried of, about it, right? I just, I, it's not that big a deal. Um, and you can see right out the bat, he learned from it, right? He learned from it pretty quickly with only one turnover this, this next game. So we're gonna get a lot of this uh, from him. He's gonna have his ups and his 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 downs, right? But overall, he did great. He had the most points on the team with 17. He went to the line. This is gonna be huge for us. 70% um, from the line, seven for 10. So that's a lot of free throws. That's a lot of free throws. And he's gonna continuously be able to do that. When I say, and I, I draw comparing, I'm not the only one that's done this, but I just say when he draws comparisons to SGA, this is the type of stuff they're talking about, right? Can get to the line, utilize his size well. Good rebounder too. How many rebounds did he have this game? Uh, he only had two. Were they offensive rebounds? Yeah. Okay, so he had two offensive rebounds. That's why they stood out to me. So he had two offensive rebounds, four assists. He did great. He did great. Doesn't look Doesn't look like a rookie at all. He's amazing in contact. He really is June Bug. He really is. His change of pace is really good. Throws defenders off guard. Yes. I agree. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. So these are the players that got, you know, the end of the game minutes, basically. Uh, Harrison Ingram. I told you guys this time and time again. I'm not coming off of this either. I, I truly do believe this. Um, <laughs> only eight minutes. He got six rebounds. I think when it's all said and done, I don't know what's going to happen with Keldon in the future, right? I, I just I just don't. I don't. Um, I'll try my best not to harp on it too much. Uh, he didn't even play this game, obviously. But, uh, but I do think that Harrison Ingram is going to be a perfect backup small forward because uh, he, makes, he makes some really great reads, man. High IQ player, tough um he's he's already shown at uh, north carolina that he can be a three and d player if that's what you need him to be uh he he's he's multifaceted he has a lot of things to his game that i think a lot of people don't think about because when he first started college he was more of a uh point forward that that's what he was he was a point forward and then north carolina is when he got more attention and he was like okay i'll adjust my game to what this team needs and they need a three and d and he was a three and d for them and he was great he was great at that role um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about him. Um, he's not necessarily in that, I don't want to say this the wrong way, but like NBA condition shape yet, right? Um, <clears throat> he's a better defender than what he's shown, but at the same time, I don't want to say he's flat footed cause he's not, but his lateral quickness could use some work. Uh, I seemed like he was getting blown past often so that's going to take some time you know that that that's not something that's going to be fixed during this season that's going to be something he has to work on in the off season uh with with his conditioning and everything but uh, but hey you know not expecting him to get any minutes this season but at, when it's all said and done Harris Ingram someone I believe in to be a backup small forward um same with City I believe in him too um but that would be a backup power forward probably <clears throat> moving on Brandon Boston uh, was, he's a shooter, man. He has really nice touch on his shot. That's all I can say. Defensively, I wasn't really that impressed, um, but he's fine. And the bench type guy, he's fine. Um, so a lot of people are hype about Minix. 
I like his shot as well, but I don't, I don't know if there's much else he brings to the table, to be honest. I guess I, I guess I say the same thing about Brandon Boston, but I don't understand all the hype there with some fans when it comes down. Um, passing. Okay. Maybe I need to pay attention better. He's terrible on defense. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Um, and then Malachi Flynn is, uh, he could be a sleeper, man. He could be a sleeper. He might be like a end of the bed, end of the bench, you know, some extra depth. If you need it, we have some injuries. I kind of like, I kind of like Flynn. I like, I like Flynn too small. How tall is Flynn? I have any drink left in this? Six one. <clears throat> he is he is short. But hey, if Trey Jones is, I mean, I'm not saying I don't want this to happen, but if Trey Jones is out, um, if Trey Jones and Chris Paul is out, eh, it's a pretty good player to fit into that role for a short period of time. Yeah, NGS. All right, we. All right, we're all on. We're all on Brown. We probably need to do that. So, um, just overall, how did the team do? I thought they did great, all things considered. It being the second preseason game of the season, and also being you know our main guys' first preseason game together. I thought that they did a great job. Um, Blake Wesley is continuing to uh, surprise me. Uh, now his three point shooting is still something he had to work on, but it really shows how good he's been that his three-point shooting seems like it might still not be where it needs to be so his shooting ability isn't there but good god he's still he's still he's still making the most out of his minutes it shows how good he is in other ways and if he can get a three-point shot he is nasty because of that speed because of that first step he is nasty right there will be many a games where he's beating you by himself. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. And then as far as finishing around the rim, I felt like he struggled with that a lot last season. Um, but, you know, we'll have to pay a little bit more attention to that. But he, he's been doing a really good job. Steph could already be a backup point guard over Trey. Sure. Sure. Trey definitely deserves minutes, though. You know, Trey Jones definitely deserved minutes, but uh, sure. Yeah, sure. Trey Jones doesn't make you worse. He doesn't make you worse. Um, but yeah, they passed the ball well. I. This is just a vibe thing, right? Uh, actually, let's not just do a vibe thing. What I was going to say was I don't feel like they distribute the ball as well this game than they did last. It felt like it was more individual showings of passing ability let's see actually what i can do is i'll just copy this i'll just duplicate this bad boy and then we'll go to the last game all right i don't i don't i actually don't go when do we play monday i think we played on monday let's see what happens all right here's the spurs box score I don't want it to just be a vibes thing. Okay. Uh, well, it's still kind of a vibes thing. So they had 27 assists this game. And the game against Thunder, they had 29. And it's kind of a vibes thing. But I just feel like the ball overall uh, was distributed a little better. Which, you know, that really probably comes down to the fact that, you know, Wimby and Chris Paul is out, right? You have less... Uh, talent on the court so obviously you're going to try to work more as a team um but overall i think they did great great facel injured yeah he's injured he's injured facel off bench uh facel will be back in november he'll be checked again at the beginning of november um but yeah he's 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 been dealing with a uh was a strain fracture in his foot or something whatever you call it But yeah, he'll be fine. He'll, he'll be fine. And then you, as soon as he can get some minutes, minutes, you put you throw him back in that starting lineup, right? And then Julian coming off the bench. That's where I think it's going to be special for Julian. 
Julian MIP. I'm still saying Devin MIP, but sure. Oh, you mean for the team? Yeah, sure. I think the NBA is going to put Devin Fassell on notice. I think the NBA will say maybe he's MIP. Who's the backup center for now? Zach Collins. And Zach hasn't played. He hasn't played yet. Well, actually, I say Zach Collins. Bassey hasn't played either. Eh, those two. Doesn't matter. All right, let's move on.